well written, didn't it? At our guild meetings, as I'm sure most guilds do, we have a swap table. And people bring in stuff they don't want anymore, fabrics, patterns and so on. And everyone rummages around and grabs what they want. And last year, someone brought in a pile of fabric from a friend of theirs who was unfortunately become too frail to do any more sewing so was giving away all of their stuff and everyone of course pounced on all the fabric but my eye was drawn by a whole load of orphan blocks that were sitting in the pile no one really wanted and they are all sorts of blocks there's of some quite large ones and there's some medium sized ones and there's some really tiny ones it's all sorts of blocks and there's some border pieces and some that look like they're the beginning of something and just some really random pieces I thought, I wonder if you could combine all of those into something. They don't really match, so this is going to be a challenge. But I think it might be fun to try. I'm going to throw them onto my design wall and see what I can do. How hard can it be? <laughs> My first step was to lay everything out on the design wall just so that I could get a sense of what I've got, which was a real mixture. There's all different shapes and sizes, but there are some blocks which obviously went together. So I decided to start by combining some of those blocks into bigger blocks. That already looks a bit more coherent. The blocks are still all different sizes though, so I'm obviously going to need some sort of sashing or coping strips to be able to combine them. I found this fabric in my stash that I think is going to work really well as a background. The grey is neutral enough that it works with all of the different colours, and I think I've got about 3 metres of it, so that should be plenty for the whole quilt, I hope. I know I want that big blue block to be in the top corner, so I'm going to sew some borders onto it just to define where the edge of the quilt will be and go from there. And now it's just a matter of adding sashing to the blocks to make them the right size to be able to sew them together and then sew them to the next blocks and so on. I do have a rough layout for where I want the blocks to go and I'm going to be working in chunks so that I can avoid the dreaded partial seams. I want the quilt to look like the blocks have almost been scattered randomly across it. But of course, I do have to think about where those final big scenes are going to be. There is a lot of quilt mats involved in this. To work out what width of coping strip to add to each block to make each set of blocks the right size to fit with the set of blocks next to it. It's a good thing I really like maths. doing something a little bit sneaky with these long border pieces. I've unpicked one of the seams and I'm going to sew half into one chunk and the rest of it into the next chunk so when I sew those chunks together it's going to recombine the block and make it look like it extends over that long seam which hopefully will disguise where the long seams are making it a bit less obvious how the quilt was constructed and adding to that sense of the blocks being randomly placed. And here's the finished quilt top. It's weird and chaotic, but I like it. I think the grey background really pulls all the different colours together, which 
considering how many different colours are in this quilt is amazing. And I think I've achieved my aim of having it look like the blocks were placed randomly. So all I've got to do now is quilt it. Uh, but that will have to wait for another video. Don't forget to do all those nice internet -y things like liking and subscribing and I will see you next time. Ka kite ano internet. Thank you.